Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kevan Davani. I'm also the host of the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. Um, the WHO, the World Health Organization, has paddled back global lock, lockdown uh, recommendations and, uh, or I don't know, should we call it orders? Um, and the question is why, why now? And so there's a number of articles and investigative um, work being done by other, you know, lawyers or um, uh, investigative journalists, which I want to go over. So the WHO, the World Organization, backflips on the virus stands by condemning by condemning lockdowns so the world organization has backflipped on its original covid 19 stance after calling for world leaders to stop locking down the countries and economies now it's really weird that it's it's happening all at once without any you know negative consequences for the who who are you know heavily funded by the ccp the you know communist uh, uh regime and of China and uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, or Bill, or just short Bill Gates. Um, so, Dr. David Nabarro from the WHO appealed to world leaders here that um, uh, telling them to stop using lockdowns as your primary control method of the coronavirus. After you know a lot of existences have been destroyed, uh, trade and commerce have been suspended, at least restricted. Um, uh, you know, people have been losing their, 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 you know, their jobs, their businesses. I mean, it's, it's the pain and suffering is unimaginable. Now, this Dr. David uh, Nabarro also claimed that the only thing lockdowns achieved was poverty with no mention of the potential life saved. Lockdowns, he said, just have one consequence is that you must never ever belittle and that is making poor people an awful lot poorer. Uh, other quotes, it says, uh, we in the World Health Organization do not advocate lockdowns as the primary means of control of this virus. He, that's what he told the spectator um, in media outlet, the only time we believe a lockdown is justified is to buy you time to reorganize, regroup, rebalance your resources, protect your wealth workers who are exhausted, but by and large would rather not do it. And then it says in this article, Dr. Nabar's main criticism of lockdowns involved the global impact, explaining how poor economies that had been indirectly affected. After all this suffering and pain and, and, and destruction of economies, uh, admitting that without any fear of negative consequences or, you know, any kind of consequences, it's really mind boggling. So, and then further, it says here, uh, quote, uh, just look at what's happened to the tourism industry in the Caribbean, for example, or in the Pacific, because people aren't taking the holidays. Look what's happened to smallholder farmers all over the world. Look what's happened to poverty levels. It seems that we may have uh, ha well have a doubling world poverty by next year. We may have at least a doubling of malnutrition. Mal Melbourne's lockdown has been hailed as one of the strictest and longest in the world. In Spain's lockdown in March, people weren't allowed to leave the house unless it was to walk the path. In China, authorities welded the door shut to stop people from leaving their homes. The WHO thinks these steps were largely unnecessary. Oh, all of a sudden it's unnecessary. Uh, indeed, Dr. Nabar is advocating for a new approach to containing the virus. And then it's, it quotes, and so we really do appeal to all world leaders, stop using lockdowns as your primary control method, develop better systems for doing it, work together and learn from each other. And then it says, uh, his message is timely in a world. First, a number of health experts from all over the world came together calling for an end to coronavirus lockdowns early this week. They created a petition called the Great Barrington Declaration, which said the lockdowns were doing irreparable damage. And now it's been, and now uh, there's a quote again as infectious disease epidemiologists and public health scientists we have grave concerns about the damaging physical and mental health impacts of the prevailing COVID-19 policies and recommend an approach we call focus protection. Um, and then further on quoted current lockdown policies are producing devastating effects on short and long-term public health. The petition has had 12,000 signatures so far. It was authored by Sunetra Gupta of the University of Oxford, Jay Bhattaracha of Stanford University, and Martin Kuldorf at Harvard University. When asked about the petition, Dr. Barra had only good things to say, really important point before Professor Gupta. Now, 
let me let me just say, I mean, this is, of course, a, a very clever strategy in order to prevent uh, negative consequences, or they don't have to fear negative consequences because they're sort of, you know, WHO is like the central bank and untouchable, and they're being financed, you know, by all kinds of uh, cronies and uh, Bill and Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the uh, Chinese Communist regime. The source is amp.news.com slash AU. AU, that's from Australia, really advise you, I recommend you to read. It's on tabletmag.com by, uh, by Michael P. Sanger. You can find him on, on Twitter, which I hope I'm going to interview him soon. That's uh, Michael P. Sanger. And there's a Twitter thread below that article where he, where he um, you know, highlighted that article. And then it says here, uh, sort of as a summary, by promoting fraudulent data, aggressively deploying disinformation and flexing its institutional clout, Beijing tra transformed the snake oil of lockdowns into science, so-called science, crippling rival economies, expanding its influence and sowing authoritarian values. You should definitely read the article by yourself because it's, uh, it's not lengthy, but it would just, you know, take too much time now to, uh, you know, take a lot of those gems, but I'm still going to take a look at it uh, together uh, with you. And then it says further on, in March 2020, liberal democracy ground to a sudden stop. Like the Reichstag fire of 1933, historians may never know how SARS-CoV-2 came about, for scientists exploring its origins would be a rewarding endeavor if it weren't precluded by the jackboot of Xi Jinping's CCP, the Chinese Communist regime. As one lead scientist wrote, Xi persistent refusal to allow an independent international investigation into the origins of the virus is more than a lack of responsibility. It is a declaration of contempt for human life, unquote. It is a crime that cost lives, quote, unquote. Um, and then it further says, while intelligence agencies spent months investigating COVID origins, the world imposed lockdowns modeled on those in China, causing a depression level collapse, widespread hunger, and countless bankruptcies. This is how Beijing shut down the world. So the, art, the name of the article is China's Global Lockdown Propaganda Campaign, subtitle Inside the CCPs, the Chinese Communist Regime's Use of Social Media Bots and Other Disinformation Tactics to Promote Its Own a response, response to the coronavirus pandemic and attack its critics. Again, the author is Michael, J, Michael P. Sanger. And then further on, he says in his Twitter thread, um, because someone, you know, commented sort of, oh, you know, all Western leaders are reading from the same great reset, uh, nor New World Order script. And then he commented, you know, uh, the author of this article of, uh, commented on Twitter, nothing about my work is meant to exculpate Western leaders. They're 100% responsible for their own actions. And there's a high level complicity between them and the CCP. But the planning, propaganda and snake oil science all lead back to the CCP. And uh, there's another guy who also commented, uh, you know, the data of the CDC of the United States, you know, the Center of Disease uh, uh, Control um, uh, Institution. It says the update to mortality rates figures by age group for COVID-19. Just, I mean, this is really interesting, very fast, fascinating just to compare. From zero to 19 years old, that's 0 0.0001. From 20 to 49 years old, that's 0 0.0003. From 50 to 69 years old, that's 0 0.010. And from 70 plus years onwards, that's 0 0.093 mortality rate. Now, by comparison, common flu has an overall mortality rate of 0.1%. I mean, just, just, just digest these, these numbers, these data, and the fact and the factual reality of it. Let's just go over the, um, the, the article. Again, I will try to get him on my show. I already uh, texted him a couple of the gems here. It says, um, uh, two weeks later, Xi personally authorized a lockdown of Hubei province based on his philosophy of Fang Kong, the same hybrid of health and security policies that inspired the re-education quarantine of over 1 million Uyghur Muslims infected with extremism in Jiangsan. The World Health Organization's representative in China noted that trying to contain a city of 11 million people is new to science. The lockdown of 11 million people is unprecedented in public 
health history, and so it is certainly not a recommendation the WHO has made, unquote. The CCP confined 57 million Hubei residents to their homes. At the time, human rights observers expressed concerns. As one expert told the New York Times, the shutdown would almost certainly lead to human rights violations and would be patently unconstitutional in the United States. Regardless, and then it says in the article further on, regardless on January 29th, WHO Director Tedros Adhanom said he was very impressed and encouraged by the President Xi Jinping's detailed knowledge of the outbreak and what a schmoozing you know, statement. And the next day praised China for setting a new standard for outbreak response, unquote. Yet only six days in the lockdown, uh, quote, unprecedented in public health history, unquote, had produced no results. No, so Tedros was praising human rights abuses with nothing to show for them. And then uh, what's very interesting, uh, international COVID-19 hysteria began around January 23rd when so-called leaked videos from Wuhan began flooding international social media sites, including Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, all of which are blocked in China, allegedly showing the horrors of Wuhan's epidemic and the seriousness of its lockdown. Viral videos claim to show residents spontaneously collapsing in the streets in scenes likened to the movie Zombieland, and they show The Walking Dead. One video purportedly showed a SWAT team catching a man with a butterfly net for removing his mask. But in hindsight, the crisis theater is somehow comical. In the infamous video, the, quote, spontaneously collapsing, unquote, man extends his arms to catch himself. And, you know, a lot of other things, very odd, very weird, very strange, very contradictory. You know, also this doctor, you know, who put up, uh, you know, images of himself, quote, China's uncompromising and rigorous use of non-pharmaceutical measures to contain transmission of the COVID-19 virus in multiple settings provide vital lessons for the global response, unquote. Scientists, then it says in this article, scientists quickly began drafting plans in many languages to imitate China's lockdowns. The New York Times immediately cited WHO's report forming a pro-lockdown stance. It has clung to four months, uh, to four months uh, with surprisingly little introspection. China, it says here, quote, China's took one of the most ancient strategies and rolled out one of the most ambitious, agile, and aggressive disease containment efforts in history, unquote. So, yeah, so let's go on on this article. And um, it says also here, on March 9th, Italy, the first major European country to sign on to Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Initiative, you know, this whole very big trade um, agreement took the WHO's advice and became the first country outside China to lock down. Ital Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte had long advocated closer ties with China. Chinese experts arrived in Italy on March 12th and two days later advised a tighter lockdown. Quote, there are still too many people and behaviors on the street to improve, unquote. On March 19th, they repeated that Italy's lockdowns was not strict enough, as we can see now. And then it says in the quote here, here in Milan, the hardest hit area by COVID-19, there isn't a very strict lockdown. We need every citizen to be involved in the fight of COVID-19 and follow this policy. So Italy, and then it says, Italy was simultaneously bombarded with Chinese disinformation from March 11th to 23rd, roughly 48 uh, sorry, roughly 46% of the tweets with the hashtag Forza uh, Cine Italia, Go China, Go Italy, and 37 of those with the hashtag Thank You China came from bots. And while analysts typically focus on finding as many inauthentic accounts as possible, the purpose of the following discussion is different using simple investigatory methods to evince the intent behind Beijing's disinformation, which appears to be far more insidious than analysts have recognized. Social media and analytics companies generally only detect obvious automated activity while fake personally managed accounts can be created with ease. This works out well for the CCP, which has always preferred the human touch. So it's a really fascinating article with a lot of quotes, with a lot of investigative, you know, background information, you know, this whole propaganda, disinformation campaign, uh, fraudulent, you know, uh, production of data of numbers in March, China, Chinese state media began describing the strategy of herd immunity, allowing the coronavirus to spread among the young and healthy as a violation of human rights, unquote, an Orwellian formulation, giving the lockdowns are essentially a blanket suspension of rights or human rights, actually. 
And now this is interesting. Sweden's skepticism toward the CCP, the Chinese Communist regime, predates COVID-19 in January. Beijing threatened Swedish trade ties over an award given to Gui Gongchu, a Swedish publisher detained in China. Sweden did not back down and later refused to follow China's lockdown model, opting for herd immunity herd immunity strategy, thus Sweden became a prime target of a Chinese campaign, portraying it as weak against the COVID threat. In the words of China's straight-run Global Times, Chinese analysts and netizens doubt herd immunity and called it a violation of human rights, citing high mortality in the country compared to other Northern European countries. Quote, so-called human rights, democracy, freedom are heading in the wrong direction in Sweden and countries that are extremely irresponsible do not deserve to be China's friend. Initially, it says in this article, Br British Prime Minister Boris Johnson also opted for herd, herd immunity, but on March 13th, suspicious accounts began storming his Twitter feed and likened his plan to genocide. This language almost never appears in Johnson's feed before March 12th, and several of the accounts were hardly active before then. Britain locked down on March 23rd. And then it further says here in the article, Xi Jinping has frequently stressed global cooperation to fight COVID-19. In turn, the world has started to look more like China. Localities introduced tip lines to report lockdowns and violations in countries, unviled new fleets of surveillance drones. Chinese company DJI donated drones to 22 US states to help enforce social distancing rules. Very interesting. And then further on says, speaking through official channels, the CCP has avoided literally telling other governments to lock down, but rather the CCP has shamed governments for not locking down and relentlessly advertised its pandemic response, unquote, which of course means lockdowns. In March, Chinese state media bought numerous Facebook ads extolling China's pandemic response. All of them ran without Facebook's required political disclaimer on July 7th, FBI Director Christopher Wray disclosed that the CCP specifically approached local politicians to endorse its pandemic response. Quote, we have heard from federal state, from federal, state, and even local officials that Chinese diplomats are aggressively urging support for China's handling of the COVID-19 crisis. Yes, this is happening at both the federal and state levels. Not that long ago, we had a state senator who was recently even asked to introduce a resolution supporting China's response to the pandemic. So very, very interesting article. It really goes into detail, a lot of, you know, uh, quotes and citations and facts and numbers, background information. So, you know, it's all coming to the surface, all these lies, manipulation, propaganda, campaigns, um, and, and despicable, you know, uh, go political measures that have been taken uh, where people are really being are in pain and suffering, losing the businesses, going into bankruptcies, cannot open the shops, having to wear masks, children, you know. And uh, and then what I like about this last quote, uh, I'm sorry, last paragraph in this article says, and then there's a possibility that by shutting down the world, Xi Jinping, the pre, you know, the president of China, who vaulted through the ranks of the party, quotes, ancient Chinese scholars has massive debts and derivatives, studies complexity science, and envisions a socialist future with China at its center, knew exactly what it was doing. So check out this article by Michael P. Sanger. I'm going to put those in the show notes uh, on tabletmeg.com slash sections slash news slash articles. Uh, China minus COVID minus lockdown minus propaganda. So that's about it. Thank you so much for your attention, for listening, for your support. Please follow me on Twitter, share this video, share these articles. That's my Twitter handle. That's Kayvan Davani. And you can also follow me on LinkedIn, on YouTube. Please subscribe. It's Kayvan Davani or the total connector follow me and subscribe and write a positive review if you if you like my podcast on the different you know pl uh, podcast platforms on anchor.fm slash kevandavani so thank you so much again if you want to support me in any way my dm is open my email address is hello at the total or and if you want to you know uh, support me in my film project human life rooted in Bitcoin, you know, for a trailer, for a film project, in order to educate, to really enlighten humanity and create new structures. Uh, because there's, you know, there's just two extreme directions <laughs> or two, you know, there's a rational one and an, and an irrational one or slavery, dictatorship, um, you know, and oppression and, uh, you know, total surveillance, or we're going into total freedom and, uh, 
you know, total prosperity and abundance uh, with Bitcoin, rooted in Bitcoin. This is why, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate of Bitcoin because it de-roots and de-centralizes uh, everything we know of that is, you know, has, has committed so much, you know, systematic crimes for such a long time now. So thank you so much again. My name is Kivan Devani, the Total Connector, and I'll see you soon again. Bye.